so I wasn't under any particular time pressure. But if I wanted to get this video out in time, things would have to get efficienter. Which is a problem for me because if I play Factorio for too long, my brain goes, woo, 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 woo. Yeah, monkey brain. <laughs> and I walk around and How's it going people? Jack here with another reaction, so today I'll be checking out the expansion into space by Martin Stupens in Factorio. I tried this base exploration mod for just a smidgen of time. Uh, it, it, it can only go so far because Factorio is crack and kids don't do crack but play Factorio in moderations. What I kind of like about it is that the multi-service logistic is kind of set aside just a little bit or to put it simply, like there's a certain level of complexity that is reduced down, especially if you have the creator lab. I've dabbled only like a little bit on that, so hopefully we'll get an explanation on that here in the video. But it, it makes things a bit easier, of course, depending on who you are as a player. The hardcore player is most likely going to be wanting everything to be as complex as possible for the thrill of problem solving, while I, the casual gamer, just can just witness as quickly as my brain gets turned into mush. So why bother? <laughs> but just don't take my words for it, let's just check out what Martin Stopens has to say about this. Good evening. Welcome back to Factorio. Hello. Last video we installed the space exploration mod, built a big old factory, laid waste to our enemies, constructed a rocket and launched ourselves into the great beyond. In this video we expand even further. More death, more destruction, and more of development of unprecedented risk management strategy through scalable microactions. In this video we won't just be going to space, but other whole planets. The entire solar system will not be spared from our reach. So, let us continue. <laughs> reach for the stars. But, before we can continue, I must fulfill my obligations. Okay, <clears throat> let me uh, reduce the sound for a little bit. Opera GX! That's right, boyos, this video is sponsored by Opera GX, the speediest game of web browser you have ever seen in your entire life. Are you tired of these stinky web browsers vacuuming up all your RAM? Can't watch my videos in crystal clear 1440p because you're a Wikipedia goblin and forgot to close those 8,000 tabs about the most random shit imaginable. Herman Bing. Well, it's just a search for a name. Bing Chilling! Okay, well, yes, it's German. That, that. Why? Like, the surname. Bing. Well, worry not, fuckos. Opera GX is here. I was trying to look at the different tabs. GX control. Stop sucking up my RAM. Done. Stop sucking up my CPU. Done. Stop sucking. No, 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 no. You can even load the network bandwidth used, so when you download your 8 terabytes of smut, it doesn't interfere. If you have just one. No, 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 no. A terabyte is too much. A hundred gigs. Because I don't know, man. People download videos. Why? When you can find it on the internet and use a VPN. <laughs> but just a hundred gigs. Something's wrong. Gentlemen, you can customize this browser to your heart's content. Dark mode. Light mode. Uh. Force dark mode on every page so that this doesn't happen to you. And best of all, my very own wallpaper. Simply phenomenal. Fellas, we need to do something very important. <laughs> download Opera GX, click this button in the top right, use custom wallpaper, get more wallpapers, download my wallpaper, and rate it 5 stars. Ah. As Opera GX told me to do this. Badger did this, right? For my own vanity. We are currently at 23 ratings, but we need to have more. Jay Flat has 194, Russian Badger has 272, and yeah. PewDiePie has 748. And we can do better. What are you waiting Makes for, sense. fuckos? Each passing day, my ego must grow larger. Finally, if you download using my link, you get a small section from my past few uploads, so you will never miss a video ever again. Nice. And <clears throat> let's continue. Now, you may be asking, Mr. Mart, why has it been over a year since the last Factorio video? Well, I've been lazy, but I do have some excuses. For one, I mean, it takes forever to play this game. Ben and I, in our infinite wisdom, decided that this perfectly good, albeit a bit laggy factory, wasn't good enough, and we just had to restart. So we switched up the mods a bunch and spent another 100 hours building a giant factory. Huge production facilities, a totally necessary and not pain in the ass 8 lane train network, and a room full of the most precious resource. Noob. At around 100 hours, we managed to get the first cargo rocket up and got ourselves into space. And then we were like, hmm, you know what? This world kind of stinks. I don't like the mods. Everything is too goddamn large. And generally, it has an unpleasant vibe. Oh so, no, they did it again. Why well, that explains it all then. How many times did they do this? That's an additional 100 hours wasted. Uh, not wasted. You get more knowledgeable. 
while you play. Once again, in our infinite wisdom, we abandoned that world and started over again. The so, pain. of course, day one. The crash landing, big space laser death rays, and setting up the starter base. Basic mining, basic smelting, red and green science, a blue 2021 Dodge Challenger, and most importantly, our text plates. Of penis, course. Penis, 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 and... The Zaza. <laughs> Two hours in, things were going well. And then... We built an entire factory. Now, I'm just going to say that this was an intelligence... Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, how? You know that you can see the plate. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, um, oh my god. How do you spend 40 hours in a day? Storytelling choice, and definitely not me forgetting to record anything for over 40 hours. During those 40 hours, we built a whole factory. We constructed a runway for our brand new aircraft and covered it in poop. Tristan wrote a beautiful haiku. Uh, okay. He developed a powerful addiction to cement, built some concrete production, I love that and then meme. was never heard from ever again. Oh my god, I love the wolf meme so much. Like you can make one that's even more efficient. <laughs> there are two wolves inside of you. One of them is addicted to cement, the other one is using bell balances. Your factory experience is going to be so much slower now. Again. These 40 hours of factorio wing were done before I went to America to make this video, so I wasn't under any particular time pressure. But if I wanted to get this video out in time, things would have to get efficienter. Which is a problem for me, because if I play factorio for too long, my brain goes... Woo, 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 woo. Yeah, monkey brain. <laughs> and I walk around in circles for hours at a time, doing nothing. And so, not wanting to dilly-dally any further, Ben and I set our sights on launching God space. Damn it. Day 2. Time to launch to space. Ben and I loaded... I like how he didn't even correct that. Like 40 hours in a day, that just happened. We're only just now getting into space, okay? So you can't use the excuse of, oh no, we were on a different planet while well, time is going <laughs> faster. <laughs> Interstellar flashbacks. Put up the cargo rocket with a bunch of supplies and did our maiden launch for the third time. And Oy. space, baby. Up there to greet us was this asteroid covered in junk and a bunch more useful stuff that we wouldn't be able to get for quite a while. So, after cleaning off the asteroid, we got to work on today's goal. Space science. Like all the other sciences, but space. space. While I was hard at work expanding oh, our science abilities, Ben busied himself with the construction of infrastructure. I don't know, I have a better idea, Mark. Building stuff in space presents a whole new type of logistical challenge. Where do I get materials? Well, there are a few options. Sending them up in cargo rockets, or using these. Delivery cannons. Oh yeah. Delivery cannons do exactly what you'd expect. They shoot stuff into space. For them to work properly, we need a special chest for the goods to land in, and a way of telling them to turn on and off, so this doesn't happen. Deciding on which transport mode to use presents quite the conundrum. Which items do we send via rocket? Is it worth sending the basic plates with delivery cannons, or is that impractical? Making things even more difficult was the fact that some <laughs> items we got in space couldn't really be used up here, and had to be dealt with somehow. Hold on, can't you recycle fish? And also cosmic knowledge fish, <laughs> for those of you who've ever watched the show. I think, I genuinely think that the dev knew about this because uh, the, <laughs> you get an achievement for sending fish into space. No. Ben, however, while trying to reconstruct the fish tunnel from our second base, gentlemen, the fish tunnel, found the perfect solution to that particular problem. I don't know, scrap in here. <laughs> Just <laughs> fucking flinging it into space. So, after wiring everything together, building delivery cannon chests, making a transmitter and receiver, and setting up our little space science production, before we knew it, space science was done. Bada bing, bada boom! Hey, look at that! This process takes a fair bit of energy, so using our combined three and a half brain cells, we did this. It's really fucking impossible to walk. <laughs> we are intelligent Factorio engineers. Back down on Norvis, we had a few issues. For one, a coronal mass ejection. Our umbrella defense took all the power from the factory, causing mm -hmm. a giant blackout, but none of our base was dead. They were so and lucky. E beams even barbecued some vitals. So thumbs up from me. Secondly, our flimsy walls were being eaten yet again. I'm fucking, I'm gonna take him on. No, Ben, no! I'm gonna fucking die. <laughs> For us to work efficiently in space, and eventually on other planets, our defenses would have to be self-sufficient. What we needed to do was build a wall. Oh, build day no. three. Oh no. Time to build a wall. If you cast Invasion. your mind back to the previous video, we got away with minimal wall building because you could just build an impervious moat with everyone's favorite item. Didn't completely Waterfield. work. Of course, our peaceful moat building eventually turned into this. 
Well, the mod author, clearly having seen the utter shenanigans one can achieve with a bit of water fill, no. tragically put a stop to it. Oh god. But why? It was hilarious. Truly a sad day for Bean Boys Incorporated. For this world, we decided not to use water fill since it's really not that fun, so instead we had to build an actual wall with actual defenses. <laughs> no, the so we built an actual wall with actual defenses. Yeah. Here's the blueprint. Some flamethrower turrets for the big damage, laser turrets to finish them off, and two layers of self-healing mending walls to keep out those Mexican... Uh, I mean, spiders. <laughs> to top it all off, we have straight sections, gay sections, and train stops for our repair train to come and visit when things need repairing. Now, what's the point of spending all this time designing and building a shiny new wall if it doesn't expand our territory? So, I hopped in the attack helicopter and expanded. Here we go. Our territory. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, it's just like Vietnam. <laughs> this is where our most powerful mod Fuck. came into effect. And no, I'm not talking about the helicopter. I'm talking about the replacement of explosion sounds with Vine, vine Boom. <laughs> Once it was all said and done, thousands of biters had been laid off, evicted, and burnt to death, and our territory had been greatly expanded. Now, of course, let's build that wall. During construction, I had what some might refer to as a silly clown moment. To help oh. speed things up, I'd been making good use of the jetpack, but the jetpack takes fuel. And, and I ran out. Uh, of course. Rough. Walking all the way back was gonna take me ages. It's so gonna instead get of using in. my shit ass legs, I handcrafted a Dodge Challenger in about half a second and drove it back to base. What? Uh, automating space science allowed us to research a lot of new things. New machines. Growth facility grows biological specimens under a range of control conditions. Grows biological specimens. Me. <laughs> but most importantly, everyone's favorite weapon system. Artillery. Oh, strap him on the train. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, that was underwhelming. Using it to lure him to the walls. Okay, yeah, okay. That was smart. Huh. Well, I guess the wall works pretty well. Now that the base perimeter had been secured, it was time to expand the factory to other worlds. Come to think of it, this is very much similar to the Tyranids from Warhammer 40k. rich in cryonite, the first resource that we can't just get on Norvus. And cryonite, we would be needing. Ice, So to get started, I fired up the creative world and spent a few hours creating. With other minerals. Cryonite presents a bunch of new challenges. First of all, it's not practical to put the processing plant on Norvus because cryonite ore only stacks at 20, which kind of makes moving it around a bit of a gigantic pain in the ass. But Which cryonite sounds. rods stack to 200, and each cryonite rod takes 10 cryonite ore, so that's 100 times better. Yep. Well, to make the rods, we need heavy oil, and the only way for us to get that is with oil processing, so we need to make some oil processing. But then we also need a way to deal with the light oil and petroleum byproducts, so we turn this into solid fuel. And then since another step in the process uses steam, we use the solid fuel in a boiler to make our steam. But it doesn't need that much steam, so we boil off the steam in turbines. <laughs> but the turbines only turn on when the solar panels don't produce enough energy, so we need a way of turning off the solar panels when we need to burn off the steam. And then that step that takes steam also <laughs> produces water, so we need a way of making sure the water tank is in full and not to the fucking mountains of sand produced. Why is there so much sand? So yeah, it's already pretty complicated, and this is the simplest new resource. Yeah. With all that being said, here's the blueprint. <laughs> so, time for our next big venture. Before leaving, I had written out a comprehensive, exhaustive list of everything we would need. Except, of course, cliff explosives, substations, construction box, and logistics box. Sorry, what he did right there, do not forget the perks. Perks needed. Everything we would need. Except, of course, cliff explosives, substations, construction box, and logistics box. I forgot. I built a big solar field to power the base, sent it on the rocket with all the stuff I forgot, and then sat back and let our good old botters do all the hard work. After an hour, the facility was done, and we had made our first cryonite rods. Wow. Yes! To take them back to Norvus, I built another rocket, another landing pad, and flew myself back home. And there we go, boys. Cryonite was now available. The cryonite first thing we needed for was making utility science. So I hooked it up to a delivery cannon, went back into space, stuck down a bunch more machines, and before I knew it, utility science was done. <laughs> yes! 
Finally, we could research logistics system, and the factory could grow even larger. Day 5. Time for the factory to grow even larger. Using our new logistics chests, we began reconstruction of our space base to use a bus design. And tragically, in the process of building our new bus, this happened. Oh. oh okay, at least he didn't get hit. Oh no. Funnily enough, this train had not been touched for over 20 hours and was still spinning. I finished up the side of our bus and rebuilt the science production to make a respectable 60 science per minute. Utility science was done, now it was time for production science. <laughs> production science uses vulcanite, and so it was time for more creative world. Vulcanite, like cryonite, has its own set of unique challenges. First off, vulcanite stacks to 20, so once again we want to make it into vulcanite blocks. Vulcanite ore goes into pulverizers, gets pulverized into crushed vulcanite, enriched vulcanite, and even more fucking sand. The crushed and enriched vulcanite are then used in centrifuges with some added sulfur which produces even more enriched vulcanite through a feedback loop. The enriched and crushed is then sent to industrial furnaces where it's combined with water and petroleum which makes our final product vulcanite blocks with some steam, and the steam is put through a condensing turbine which converts most of it back to water. Now this process is fairly complicated, but what makes it particularly Particularly difficult is the fact that planets with lots of vulcanite also tend to be waterless. Ah, no water damn means it. we can't easily make oh. the sulfur. Or but the cryonite, petroleum. So those need to be shipped in. Or right. do they? Mm. Since we now have access to cryonite, we can also yeah. freeze the water and ship it around that way. Water ice can stack to 200, and each ice holds 100 water, so every stack is 20,000. This is quite a good solution because ice is almost free, and we don't have to ship any barrels, nice. which is good because barrels suck. While I was sorting all this out of my head, Ben joined oh, the crib. Oh no! Oh no! He got access to the actual jokes. Oh! Oh no! This is going to be extreme. The world and decided to build some plutonium reactors. Uh huh. Of course, seeing as we were in a creative world and had access to whatever we wanted, things very rapidly went off the rails. Plutonium atomic bomb. All right, Martin, where the f are you? <laughs> oh no! Don't shoot this, please. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my, oh my god! Jeez. No, 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 no. It's gonna shoot fast, okay? He was complaining yeah. about Opera GX oh, before. Jesus Christ. My screen is just white. What are you. What's with all the worms, Ben? <laughs> Martin, in game blueprints, if you ever need, if you never need a block of twenty-three thousand worms, <laughs> it's, just, it's just fucking there. Oh my god, that's a lot of worms. <laughs> a lot of worms. <laughs> that's what that is. Back in the game, I saw that there was a mod where it basically turns the game into survival mode. Of course, some of you did also comment that uh, one of the mods can basically turn the game into common and conquer, which is pretty nice. <laughs> but yeah, it's amazing the thing that people have made. Game, we got a few things ready for our Vulcanite expansion and had a look around at the star map when we noticed an interesting structure in the asteroid belt. Oh yeah, the one we saw last episode. Day six. Oh, Agni. Oh no. Our chosen destination for Vulcanite processing. But first, more creative world to try and wrap my head around cargo rockets. Okay, it's been a few hours. Mart, did you wrap your head around cargo rockets? No. Nope. This large amount of factorio I had been doing was definitely getting to me. My initial plan of being efficient called for a schedule, short breaks every hour or two, frequent meals, <laughs> but all of that went out the window once I started actually playing. Yeah sure, I could eat right now, but I'm almost done with my new smelter setup, and I think I know which is more important. The food can wait. This game really is crack. Anyway, yep, I exactly. Suddenly you're suffering from malnutrition and you wonder why. I still had a job to do, and today it was to go to Agni and get some goddamn Vulcanite. I loaded up a rocket, this time remembering to bring the stuff I forgore last time, and flew over to our next big venture. Even more space machines, and what do you know, production science was automated. Oh my god. It only took 82 hours. Production only. science let us unlock a bunch of cool stuff. Better inserter configurations, beacons, bigger bot cargo capacity, Kovrix enrichment, and best of all, incendiary artillery shells. These are like normal artillery shells, but spicier. <laughs> and with that, I quit Factorio and went out with my friends to a nightclub. Oh no. You know, for efficiency. Day 7. After a yeah. rather solid night out, Playing with a hangover. the came on at 4am and getting home at 5, I went to bed, got nowhere near enough sleep, and hopped back on Factorio. However, as you can probably imagine, the powerful hangover I was battling with left me playing Factorio like a complete brick. So, 
I wasn't going to do anything complicated. Just some simple upgrades. Productivity module threes, some Covrix processing, concrete production to fuel my incredible cement addiction, some upgrades for the science setups, and finally, designing and building a nuclear reactor that takes no inspiration whatsoever from this one by Zisto. Nope, none. Oh. They just happen to be quite similar for Gearly no similar. particular reason. I completed the day with some copper smelting expansion. Hey girl, are you a construction worker? Because you are building. That's just factually <laughs> correct. <laughs> It just makes sense though. And right before I went to bed, I found this wonderful hidden text plate. A news. Day 8. Our resources are running low. And that space we claimed on day 3, well I think it could be larger. Right now we need more copper. And while there's a little bit within our walls, there is much, much more just a little outside of them. I think you see where this is going. It was time to expand our territory once again. I laid out a plan for a new wall, trying to use as much water as possible. But what's the point spending all this effort clearing out new territory if our wall is outdated and shit? So True. I hopped back into the creative world and built wall version 2. For our new wall, I would be using some of our new upgrades. Each wall segment would have an artillery turret loaded with incendiary shells, but the main difference is in the train stops. The old system was dumb, but the new system is less dumb. This totally, fully necessary big blob of combinators reads the contents of these chests and calls the train when supplies run low. The main advantage of the new system is that once the station is built, the train will automatically come by oh, on nice the materials and construction bots, and the bots yeah, will build the rest bots, of it for me. Yeah. The flamethrowers also now use napalm, since why not? Anyway, for us to actually build these walls, we would need to clear out a lot of biters. Okay, so, so the Vietnam we comparison the wasn't too wrong. And got to work on our next grand expansion. Use the cyberpunk music. <laughs> the first wall segment had been placed, and thousands of biters had been sacrificed for it to happen. I quickly stuck down some copper outposts, and the factory's blood could flow yet again. Day 9. I wasn't done. Gentlemen, it was time to build the rest of the wall. To build it, I'd have to clear out thousands and thousands of biters. How come so, you do that? So, do things efficiently, I ran some tests. The attack helicopter was great, but it needed lots of rockets and it had health, so it could die. Oh, no, 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 no. And while it was very fast, it could be faster. Introducing the Flying Fortress, one of the vehicles of all time. But don't those have like a genuine problem of the altitude? More health and faster speed. Surely this would be better Maybe than a helicopter. Not. Nope. The Flying Fortress is an airplane, and airplanes have this little quirk where if you go below a certain speed, they go, I don't want to fly anymore, and they land. So oh, okay. While delivering Never high mind. Explosive rockets from the safety of my plane, I flew too slow, the plane landed oh. itself, and I got mauled to death oh, no. by an angry mob. No, 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 no. No. Next up was our new Give them equal pay. artillery, which proved to be much more effective. Using manual targeting, I could clear entire giant nests in a few seconds. Even better, I could use the helicopter to get to an island, stick down the turrets, and rain death behind an impervious barrier of water. This was great, but it could be even better. Especially since the water field cannot longer kill them. That are atomic bombs. Oof. Our arsenal oh boy. was perfected. The blueprints were ready, and Operation Poop Shit was a go. And it launches now. Gee, damn. I like how it accelerates the first station as well. Jesus Christ. Oh, Ben, I found the resonant frequency of my room. Would you like to hear the resonant <laughs> frequency of my room? Yes. And would you look at that? The biters are all dead, and the wall is all built. <laughs> Holy shit, I think that's it. In total, it took me about 13 hours of pure killing, paving, and building to get here. But it was definitely worth it. Because safety and security had finally, been for real achieved. this time, been achieved. <laughs> Day 10. With our borders more secure than ever, it was time to continue on our galactic conquest. Ben and I, again seeing that spaceship in the Oof, asteroid belt, decided to hop in a and go get it. 900 days. Alright, 
here it is, Ben. Yeah. Okay. okay Three, probably... two, one, launch. Oh. And oh, he's working. Engage. Oh shit. Ooh, Oh, there we are. We're in Norvis. Kind of looks I'm like a... Go uh, down. What's that game again? Uh, the other extremely addictive space game where you kind of like uh, have to build your own starships. Cos Cosmoteer. Yeah, that one. Oh boy. Never touch it, please. <laughs> Never touch it. Just got flashback from looking at this. It's still like an early development, right? Or is one of those games that is said to never leave that stage and be an official thing, although you have to pay money to pay it. But uh, don't touch the game, please. <laughs> it hooks you so fast. Bam. I'm fucking that was stuck sick. On this solar panel. That's actually so cool. It's called the cum wagon. Yeah. <laughs> Riding on the high of our successful bootstrap spaceship experience, we scoured the star map for anything else interesting. And... We found something interesting. An alien pyramid structure poking out of the ground on the surface. Ah, the thing from last Agni. time. So, Ben and I headed over to Agni to take a look. I don't like the soundtrack here. It's the last, it the same as the one we heard from my summer car. Yeah. Okay, three, two, one, go. Well, shit. Run. You done goofed. Thanks once again to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. Download them from the link in the description and the pinned comment. And so part three is going to take an additional 500 hours to play through. Jesus. The dedication for this is uh, commendable, to say the least. But guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. Please do go and subscribe to Martin's Dopens if you aren't already. But at least go and like this video on his channel. And uh, yeah, if you like this one, of course, as always, give the video a like and subscribe if you want to see some more reactions. That's it though. See you guys in the next video. Bye.